a big box of donuts, a festival of beers, and a banana bike tour. <laughs> wow. The Travel Guys are in Portland, Oregon, next. Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Darren Parkman. And we are the Travel Guys. Well, my friend, this time we are in one of the fastest growing cities in North America and one of the most popular. Yes, it's beautiful Portland, Oregon. It's also a very groovy city. Groovy, very nice, Greg Brady. Thank I you. I like that. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we will visit a very cool festival of beer. I think I've dreamed about this in the past, a festival of beer. Yes. It's a festival all about beer, and we got our passports. You can get every beer under the sun here. Well, only, uh, only 16 more to go. We'll do a little cycling tour with our very cool yellow bikes. Boy, buddy, I gotta tell you, this is a great way to see the city, huh? It really is. It's almost like we're uh, we're taking a little ride down Vancouver Seawall. Quick question for you. Yeah. Why is everyone staring at us? Is it that our bikes aren't yellow enough? And we'll visit a Portland landmark where we'll learn about making cat hair finger puppets. Say what now? What, uh, what are you gonna buy? I don't know, I'm trying to decide between a street cat named Bob or crafting with cat hair. Hello, cat hair finger puppets, puppets made of cat oh, hair. Oh, wow, yeah. that sounds creepy and intriguing. And disgusting. <laughs> All that and a lot more coming up, so stick around. Well, when you come to Portland, one of the places you must, I say must visit, is the institution known as Voodoo Donuts. There is a lineup for this place every single day. Best donuts in town. They got any Travel Guys donuts in there? Let's go see. Well, this is kind of like Christmas morning, isn't it? It really wow, is, Wow, this yeah. combines the best of both worlds. Yes, it combines donuts and the Travel Guys. Look, there, there we are on that giant donut there. Look at that. That's you, that's me. That, that actually looks like it us. Does it looks exactly like us, yeah. Actually. That's very cool, and there's a lot of donuts here for the whole neighborhood. You, you look like you've had a couple of drinks there in that, well, you on can't, that donut. Well, you can't get away from that on a donut. <laughs> Now I know why they call it Voodoo Donuts. I'm hypnotized by the flavor. Mm. Oh. You know what, forget dinner, we're staying here. Something from every food group right in this donut here. I've had dreams about stuff like this. Mm. A tasty treat that's fun to eat. Tell us about this place and how it all came together. Uh, my business partner, Kenneth Boxen, and I, Cat Daddy, we uh, opened this up 13 years ago. And uh, it used to be just a little hole in the wall right behind us. And now we've expanded into this grand uh, palace that we have here. This is our original location. Now there are donut shops and then there are donut <laughs> shops. This place is lined up every day pretty much. Why is it so phenomenally popular? I mean, outside of the fact that you make great donuts. A lot of it has to do with uh, Isaac Hayes, who's our Black Velvet Spirit Channeler. Wait, Isaac Hayes, you, have, you, have a, you have a Spirit Channeler here. We have a Spirit Channeler wow. in all of our stores. Life. There you go, that's that's the secret. Is there anything you guys will, will not put on a donut? The oyster donut didn't really work out very well. Um, <laughs> and there was a the oyster, oyster donut. Yeah, the oyster donut was kind of funny. We had to run across the alley yeah, to yeah. actually get an oyster and run across. Now, you ever thought of adding, adding the Travel Guys donut to your roster? We would love to add the Travel Guys donut. There'll be some licensing and copyright uh, issues, but oh, we'll make it happen. Fun. Just write us a big check. We'll no, you know what? Good. Let's exchange <laughs> in donuts, actually. Well, it's kind of nice to realize not everyone's strictly into this online book thing. That's right, pal. We're at a good old-fashioned bookstore. Powell's Books is the largest, most independent, new and used bookstore on the planet. And it's a Portland landmark and a tradition in the city. That's right, pal. Now, we've got about 68,000 square feet of books. What are you looking to buy? Something Dr. Seuss-like or maybe fun with Dick and Jane. Something right. that's suitable for my grade 10 equivalency. On to the children's section. Uh, what are you reading there? You found a good book? I've got one I'm going to buy. Yeah, it's a brand new uh, book about John Wayne, the great actor. Cool. Yeah, it looks cool. pretty good. What, uh, what are you going to buy? I don't know. I'm trying to decide between a, a street cat named Bob or this wonderful craft book, Crafting with Cat Hair. So you can actually weave little 
uh, finger pump instead of cat hair. Look at that. Okay, yeah. It's you know pretty what? ingenious. I'm going to get you to a doctor when we get back home. <laughs> some classy nightlife spots here in Portland. We're at one of them right now, and I see you didn't get the sport coat memo. <laughs> I did not, actually. <laughs> well, well, we're we're at the bottle and kitchen here at the Hotel Rose. Uh, you're enjoying a nice glass of wine. A cab salve to go with my sports coat, and I see that you, you've got your beer clothes, so it's only appropriate. Oh, what are, what are beer clothes? Well, take a look in the mirror, you'll oh, see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I would say this, buddy, this really sums up the drink part of our trip here to Portland. Some great wine, some great beer. What it's been you... a big part of our trip here to Portland. <laughs> really yeah, 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 we managed to do some filming in yeah. between. What do you say we try a really cool cocktail? I think classy people like to mix. Thank you, Johnny. What is this? That is the rose drop. And rose what drop. is what is this here, Johnny? The pineapple express. Looks good. Excellent. So, wow. And how much liquor is in mine? <laughs> A lot. Good. That's all I need to know. <laughs> Don't you think this is kind of a coincidence? Mm. Why? Well, you're, you're drinking a rose drop, and wasn't that your nickname in high school? You don't know in college. <laughs> wow. Rose, rose drop. drop. I know. Well, sir, we've been in this uh, groovy city of Portland a few days. Your thoughts? Got to say, this is one of the hottest cities in North America. The increase in tourism here is phenomenal. Yeah. Everybody wants to come to trendy Portland. It's a clean city. It's a cool city. It's got an old school vibe. What are your thoughts, sir? Uh, I love the beer, the nightlife scene. They got great <laughs> music here. <laughs> I, you love the beer. I, I love the beer here. No, I've not had a bad beer since we got here, but it's a, it, I, the nightlife is great. As you said, it's very hip, very young, and uh, great music, too. I ask you what, what you like about Portland? Well, I like the beer scene. You like the beer? Yeah. You know, there's some very cool landmarks here in Portland. Some cool modern art. It's got a yeah, real yeah. cool vibe. That is a very funky piece of uh, work. What do you think it symbolizes? You know, if I had to off the cuff here say, I, I, I'm going to say man's fight man's, for freedom. Man's fight for freedom. Man's yes, fight of course, for freedom. everything. Yeah. That's the, the answer you use for everything, isn't it? Well, my friend, I guess we're now smack dab in the middle, in the heart of downtown Portland. You are correct, sir. We are in Pioneer Square. And buddy, if you look around, there's a real mixture of new and old architecture. There really are some cool old buildings. We've got the Pioneer Courthouse behind us. That's right, yeah. Some real modern, funky buildings. It's got a real cool look, this city. It, it does. Really does. Well, of course, Portland is a great walking city, but it's also a very cool biking city. And we're about to do a little biking along the uh, Portland seawall here, I guess on the banks of the Willamette River. That's correct, yes. And uh, if we're really lucky, we won't stand out too much on these bright yellow bikes and bright yellow helmets. I think we're going to fit right in. I think Let's we are. Let's we go. go. Let's do it. <laughs> I've never seen you look more ridiculous. I know. Th oh, yeah, just me. But I gotta tell you, this is a great way to see the city, huh? It really is. It's almost like we're uh, we're taking a little ride down Vancouver Seawall. Beautiful scenery. Yeah. Quick question for you. Yeah. Why is everyone staring at us? Is it that our bikes aren't yellow enough? Is no, that no, why? no. I think people are looking at us going, these guys are very cool. <laughs> These bikes are a bit shaky, aren't they? <laughs> they are. Huh? Or I'm a bit shaky, I'm not yeah. sure. Mine was built in 1936. <laughs> when was yours built? Just before the Hindenburg.
Well, Oregon has a big wine industry, and we, sir, would be remiss if we didn't sample some of that product which we are doing at this moment. <laughs> and talking, too. That's very nice. <laughs> I'm able to do two things at once, but not three. Anyway, one of the lesser known gems in the city, but a place you've got to make time for is where we are right now, and it's Oregon Wines on Broadway. Buddy, you've been here, cozy little place, great wines, sampling. You and I would probably spend all afternoon here. Well, look at this uh, shelf behind us here. That, that's got the making of one good party. I have one good party behind <laughs> that's us. Right. Cheers. Wow. Cheers. Smells like a party. Very nice. Yes, yes, this is great wine. Well, this is the fun part, my friend. Yes, very much so. We're with Kate Bowling. She's the owner of this place that we are very happy to be at, Oregon Wines on Broadway. Kate, thanks for having us. I know you'll regret it later, but we appreciate you having us here today. She already regrets it, actually. <laughs> now, Kate, what are we actually drinking here? Because we're not wine snobs, but we do know a little bit about wine. Uh, we like the reds. What, what yeah. are we drinking good. here first? We do not allow snobbery. Good, good. <laughs> so that's a good start. Um, you have two different wines. Uh, you have a 2011 from a producer called 1789 which is this wine right here. The real elegant, kind of red-fruited, slightly spicy Pinot. Now, when you say a wine has good legs, what does that mean? Means it's sexy? <laughs> a lot of times I think legs are an indication of alcohol content and viscosity. We both have been coming to Oregon uh, off and on over the years. You guys do a lot of different wines in the state, but is there one wine you guys do better than any of the others? Pinot Noir is, I would say, where this area really shines. Mm. You can really taste the quality in a oh, good wine. This is nice, yeah. And it actually is true that if you drink a good wine, you don't feel the effects of it the next day like you would with not a good wine. Isn't that true? I would agree with that statement, <laughs> yes. yeah. So the other one I chose for you all is the 2012 vintage from Stephen Goff. The 12s are going to be a lot bolder, oh, a lot mm. bigger. You were talking about legs. This yeah. wine will have a this little bit legs. more. I on always the talk legs. about legs. Yeah. <laughs> this has got Jane Russell legs. That's that very is, nice. that That's is a, beautiful. Yeah. Bold but not pretentious. When you when you come in here though, as a, as a customer, you come in and you can put out you put out uh, samples, right? You can yeah, come in for we serve 30 Oregon Pinot Noirs by the taste or by the glass. This is a very nice one here, and if you come in and sample all 30, make sure you take a cab home. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cab, Uber, Lyft, we have all of that in Portland. Well, I am in heaven right now, combining two of my favorite things, which is drinking beer, nightlife, and original advertising signs. This has got to be one of the coolest bars in all of Portland. Well, buddy, we're at Kelly's Olympia. Now, this is one of the oldest neighborhood bars in Portland, and you're right, man. I'm not into the collectible world like you are, but you're just blown away by what they've got on the walls. And you said most of it's original, huh? Eh? Uh, these are all original advertising signs worth thousands of dollars. And I've been coming to Portland for like 25 years now. This is a great town for antiques and collectibles. It really is. This is what you were talking about, is this real, authentic antique stuff, huh? This is a, a 1930s double visible gas pump. So what they do is you'd pump in the gas, fill it up to six gallons, then it would be gravity fed into your car. One of these babies, up to 20 grand. You got that much on you? Uh, can we sneak it out of here? Do you make that much in a year? No, I do Have not. Have you ever had that much? No. I didn't think so. Well, Parkman and I are taking a little break from touring around the very cool Pearl District. Have a little bite to eat right now. And we are at a place that is just symbolic of the cool trendiness of the new Portland. A place called Sizzle Pie. I'm having a, a big honk and slice of pepperoni. Cool place. I think because we're here, it makes us a little cool too, doesn't it? I am old. Yeah, and old. Mm. Good point. Great pizza. You know, I'm suddenly very hungry for something. I can't figure out what it is. Would it be pizza? What are you, psychic? <laughs> yes, I am. More Travel Guys from Portland right after this. Well, one of the things you notice when you come to Portland right away, it's a beer town. There's a ton of breweries in town that you can visit. And my friend, today, you and I today are attending we would pretty much have to consider a dream event for the pair of us. <laughs> yes, most regular people would call it Collabo Fest. 
Uh, it's basically a beer festival. Yeah. You got your beer passport. You got 17 different breweries represented here, and it's pretty much a very good day. I've dreamed about this in the past, a festival of beer. Yes. It's a festival all about beer, and we got our passports, we got our beer passports, and what are we drinking this time? Well, we're actually drinking the Base Camp Lager. Now, they make a couple of different types of lager. You've got a little more hops in yours, is that what you Well, mine I would describe as moderately hoppy and somewhat fruity. <laughs> I'm not walking into that one. Okay, mine has got a little more malt in it, but this is what they do. The beers have become so specific down here that you can get two lagers that are very different. This actually does have a fruit taste to it afterwards, and you know, you can get every beer under the sun here. Well, only, uh, only 16 more to go. Get yourself a beer passport, you will not regret it. Man, I'm loving this beer fest, man. What are you doing? You got another one there? What are you doing? Wow, aren't you? Really, really getting into the uh, spirit of this uh, big event, aren't you? Oh, a lot of the young kids here got the toques on. A couple of people just came up and asked me if I was 25. Oh, dear, really? <laughs> I mean, 25, you times that by two, they might be more accurate, I guess. Eh? <laughs> Cheers! How do you like my toque? without human foosball behind us. What now? Human foosball. You want to play, get in there. No, and you're subbing in. It looks tiring just watching it. It does. Well, Parkman and I are taking a little break from the drinking to actually do a little work. Uh, we're here with Morgan Taché. She's the events coordinator for one of the breweries here, Base Camp Brewery. We are having a great time. Thanks for the invite today. Yeah, of course. Happy to have now, you guys. Now, Morgan, this is a once a year event. You ever thought of holding it every day, 365 days a year? Because I'd be here, I would. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's great when all these brewers, I think there's 17 of them here, come together like a family and put this on. I mean, is there a good family atmosphere amongst the brewers? Like everybody works with each other in this town? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's one of the cool things about Portland's brew scene is everybody works together all the time and helps each other out, so it's pretty fun. And I said Darren and I are drinking together today, so we're trying to do our part. <laughs> exactly. And Morgan, it does our hearts good to see the community banded together for one single cause, and that is, of course, delicious, beer. tasty beer. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Well, now it's time for a little thing we like to call Jim and Darren Meet the People. Or, as it's also known, approaching total strangers that normally ignore us. Let's go. What is the coolest thing about Portland, in your opinion? The beer. The beer? Without a doubt, the beer. I love all the really good beer. The beer, obviously. <laughs> Tell our viewers in Canada what you love about beer. Portland. Beer. Yeah. There's a lot of beer here. A lot of people are saying that. This, is a, this really is a beer town, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Now, do you try and get out a couple times a week and actually partake in some beer drinking? Absolutely. I'm gaining respect for you by the second. <laughs> there are brew fests like this throughout the whole year. It's not just a summer thing. Yeah, yeah. And you can always find something different, something you've never tried before. There's a really it's good summer. vibe in this town too, isn't it? Huh? Yes. In America, you call this a beanie, right? That's what I would call it. In Canada, we call this a dunce cap, basically. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to judge you based on that, but uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Beer and what? Yes, People. Yeah, the people. The people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just met her today and she is the best, my bestie. Well, we're in the uh, middle of downtown Portland, and I don't think I've ever seen so many food trucks. This a is lot a of food trucks. Very popular area with tourists and and people that live here, buddy. You've got every type of food you can imagine in this little one block area. With all these choices, what are you uh, what are you ordering? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look around. I'm gonna get something. Really? You don't I'm want to tell something. us right now? No, I'm, just, I'm getting something. Okay. okay. So, what did you decide on? I looked around, I got myself an exotic sandwich. An exotic sandwich? What's what's between the bread there? Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese, wow. And very potato chips. Very, oh, even very adventurous, wonderful. <laughs> and you got a little pickle there too, I think it's great. Well, 
even though one of us forgot the dress code, we've had a wow. great time here in the beautiful state of Oregon. But before we leave, as we always do, let's check out Jim and Darren's top five coolest things about our trip to Portland. Cheers. Cheers. I a sport coat. I know, I really should have one on. Number five. It's got to be finding literary treasures here at Powell Books. I am so excited. I'm going to learn with this book how to make finger puppets out of real cat hair. Out of all the books in the store, that's the one you're going with. Look at this. It's beautiful. <sighs> Number four. It's got to be sampling some great wines here at Oregon Wines on Broadway. Cheers. I can get used to this sampling thing. Yes, yeah. very much so. Number three. Finally realizing our dream of having our images on a donut. Wow, look at that. It looks exactly like us. And we look delicious, we do. We look very delicious down there. Whew. Wow, that was fun. Number two, it's gotta be taking a bike ride along the banks of the Willamette River in downtown Portland. With our bright yellow bikes. My eyes are hurting from the glare of the yellow. I'm used to it now. <laughs> And the number one coolest thing about our trip to Portland. It's got to be downing more than our share of pints at the Festival of Beers Collabo Fest. And the least coolest thing about our trip to uh, Portland is Darren's hat. Now a lot of people here have told me that I can pull off this look, that it's working for me. Uh, they've been drinking. You got a point there. Yeah. You got a point there. We'll see you next time on The Travel Guys. It's, it's, it's good, doesn't it? Not really at all. No? <laughs> <laughs>